Hey, what's up? So this this kind of dovetails my the last video that I made like a second ago about the Mandela effect, but um, I think it's a separate video. So I made another video, which it also dovetails, uh, which, is, which was called um, the theme that I'm exploring in life right now. And I have been exploring this theme of alignment, how to be in alignment, to come into alignment, to embrace alignment, because I certainly know uh, what the effect has been of being out of alignment, certainly with my diet, with my with my yoga, you know, with my postures, I've done damage to myself. I've become sick. I've suffered. I've, I've had, I've been in a lot of pain and all this kind of stuff. So, um, I've learned some lessons, right? And so there is a new lesson. Um, a couple of them. Another one that I'm learning right now is balance. Um, and certainly this raw food diet has, brought that to the forefront because it's like when you're eating just raw food you need to be careful that you're need you're, you're eating your body's requirements so you need to pay attention um not focus on right but pay attention to your carbohydrate intake as well as your protein intake um as well as other things like water and stuff like that but those things are huge and I didn't used to do that properly, and I would say that's why I failed. Um, another thing that I would share just while on the topic of that diet is like some of the th other pitfalls that I have experienced on a raw food diet in the very short period of time that I've been doing. I've been doing it for about 10 days now. Um, like one of them is, is certainly not having enough different things, but I, I realized veggies and dip yesterday where like you can make a cashew nut um dip with like any kinds of herbs and spices in it and holy smokes i mean i really enjoy veggies and dip so that's become like all i found a staple you know that is enormous when it comes to having a diet because otherwise my diet my staples are like rice and beans and quinoa and stuff like that so shifting to a, a raw food based diet right like that just like plant-based raw food based um gray area and so you know another thing too is that since i've been doing this yeah all the pain went away but i've been uh, my body started detoxing and i got like zits like i don't get zits ever you know what? no it's not too I'm, i might get a few a year you know like six a year you know certainly not many more but in the 10 days that I've been on this thing, I've had a number of them crop up around this area. I had one form right here in the middle of my eyebrows. But then I even, I have one that's still kind of there right now. They're, they're all going away, but pretty nasty, you know, like to have all of this, these detox symptoms come up and I stink too holy smokes you know like I normally smell pretty sweet because I eat a fruit-based diet I eat a whole food plant-based fruit-based diet I intermittent fast you know I drink lots of water uh I'm but all of a sudden on a raw food diet and it's just I I, I can normally wear a shirt like I wear these shirts I'll wear this shirt for like days you know I could wear the same shirt for a week because I don't stink I don't I don't smell you know there's not a I wouldn't I wouldn't change it unless I needed to unless there was a smell in the armpits but now I change my shirt pretty much every day because my body's detoxifying it's getting rid of whatever it's been holding on to because of this diet I swear like the diet's the only thing that I've changed and yeah I mean stinky stinky like Remember, I used to drink coffee. I, I still drink coffee, but rarely. It now it's a treat. It's not a. It's not something that I indulge in. Um, and so, and when I drink a coffee, I always smell it in one armpit. It it produces like a um, like a, a sour kind of pungent. I don't know bitter smell. It's weird. Only one arm, and you know, because it it runs through you. I mean, and I've certainly noticed that with a lot of other foods as well, such as, uh, like say when you, if I drink coconut, uh, I smell it when I, when it comes out of me, you know, there's a lot of things to eat beets. It comes out of you. There's things that come out of you. Asparagus. I've never experienced the asparagus one, right? But, 
um, yeah, I've certainly noticed um, certain other things. The coffee, I've noticed. Um, you can I can tell when that moves through my body. So anyways, um, this other, this other, what do you call it, um, theme that I have been experiencing is to do with what a lot of people would call patience. But for myself, um, because of this teaching that it's like they say patience is only necessary if you have impatience because impatience is is when you're dealing with something and you you're impatient so because you're like oh I should be somewhere else doing something else I don't feel like waiting for this this is interrupting me you know something is yeah I I have better things to do um right and so that is so you need patience only if you have impatience but if you always understand that you are exactly where you need to be doing what you need to be doing then there's no need for patience i mean that is that's what they say patience is a virtue it is not um because uh what do they say sloth of a vice is not a virtue you know it's like saying oh i didn't get angry or I didn't steal something. It's like, that's not virtuous. Virtue is like a good quality as opposed to just the sloth of a vice, like not like, oh, I didn't do something that I shouldn't be doing anyways. That's not, that's not virtuous anyways. And so I have been um, experiencing in a very profound way um, you know, for what it's worth, we could use the word patience, but no, but like, so for myself, it's acceptance. It's like, uh, so pretty much everywhere that I go, I am faced with a, mm, with a scenario or with a circumstance, with a, with an experience where I am being forced to wait like a significant amount of time. Like, I go for a drive somewhere and I'll be driving behind somebody who, who, so in Canada, it's 50 kilometers an hour. And the person in front of me, it would be just like a road in the middle of nowhere. And the person would be going 35, you know, not looking at their speedometer, not looking in any mirrors, just doing their own thing. But because I'm going through this and I understand that this is an opportunity of for growth for me, this is um something that i'm embracing it's a theme that i'm experiencing the point is is to not to say even though the the road is wide open i could speed up and go around this person and get on with my day right but no instead i practice acceptance and surrender and just slow down you know a part a lot of some of the slow down stuff came I got a speeding ticket and I was going to work which is ridiculous like who needs to get to work faster <laughs> it, <laughs> if you know what I mean right um and then so I got that but I looked at it as a blessing because I was like you know what I wanted to slow down and now it's just like this is ridiculous I did not need to be going a hundred and like a you can go a buck twenty on the highway here and they won't do anything. And you even said on my ticket, um, you get, I was doing 129. So it's like, if you're, but the speed limit's a hundred, but you, they won't bust you for going 20 over, but one kilometer over that 21, they will bust you. Cause then you're just kind of pushing it. Whereas 140 is excessive and you will get a, like a $500 ticket and they will impound your vehicle. So, you know, I looked at it not as poor me. It was a, you know, it was 175 bucks that I spent to learn a lesson and to slow down. But it was great. I'm grateful for it, right? There's no, no hard feelings. I, because imagine, so, so I've slowed down now. And it's way better to pay, for me, it's, it's way better to spend 175 bucks to learn a lesson than to be driving too fast. And what if you hit somebody, right? What if you're driving through a neighborhood and you know, you're, you're, you're on this, this pace, you're on this, you go, 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 go. And what if you, yeah, you know, what if you hit somebody? What if you hit something and damage your car? What if you, you know, you can do a lot of 
damage just by going too fast. So it's like to slow down is a blessing. It is a gift and I am embracing it right now. And, uh, you know, I've experienced this going into stores. There'll be, I went in the store and I just need to get this one thing. And there was like one person working and the till was acting up and like, it, I, I tell you, for this one thing, it took half an hour to just, like, say, walk in and buy a, a, a thing of, say, I don't know, cashews or whatever, right? So it was pretty, uh, but, and there was a guy behind me losing it, you know, just muttering things to himself, just, you know, oh, oh, just, just sitting there getting angry and frustrated, and it's just like, you know, that doesn't help anything, you know, it, it, because we're in a shared environment there. So somebody getting angry, you know, the woman behind the, the till, it doesn't help her. I mean, it's not her fault that the computer's messing up or that she's understaffed. I mean, it, it is what it is, right? So it, it helps if you can be a, a beacon of acceptance and surrender and letting go and just, uh, yeah, getting over um, the need. To, you know, if you have somewhere you need to be, then put down whatever you're buying and walk out the door and say, okay, I guess I'll get this later, right? But getting bent out of shape doesn't help anything. And yeah, there's just been a number of these circumstances. I would say a good 20 of, oh no, I would say a good dozen, you know, just to be, to. I don't like to exaggerate. Um, so but one after the other, after the other, after the other, everywhere that I go, I'm being forced, um, forced to slow down or given an opportunity to, to slow down and not to think, okay, I need to somehow circumnavigate this. I need to, I need to do something in, in, so that I can get ahead, so that I'm not being held back, so that I can, so that I can do things that are more important right so just to get out of that entire mind state it has been so such a beautiful process because i you know who need you know i used to like to drive fast i don't know why i honestly don't you know i got when i got my this ticket it was on a straight stretch that i you pull out onto the high one this part and i would say aha there's definitely no cops here. There's nowhere for them to sit. And so I can pin it. I can go at least a buck 40 and I'm not, and there's nobody there. And then there was a cop, right? Um, which was good. You know, I look at it as an angel in disguise, you know, because he saved me from something else later down the road because of how it kind of, because of, yeah, how it played out and how I'm embracing slowness. And you know, even like, so yesterday I witnessed an accident. I was right behind a guy who went up onto the side of a mountain. He went, or like, like mountain, but it's like, just like the side of the mountain on a hill and then went up and then like tore up the, his vehicle and then down into a ditch. And it was like an old guy, like very old, um, with Parkinson's and he's he's like he blinked out is what he said like blinked out anyways were his words and he was really shooken up you know especially because he's already got the shakes you know and I my uncle has Parkinson's as well so it kind of hit close to home and I was just like holy cow I, I ran up there I got out of my car helped him out of his car drove him home to his wife. He was so upset because he just totaled his wife's car. And that was, of course, his last drive. I mean, he shouldn't have been driving anyways, arguably, but I stopped and then I went back and helped to uh, get everything out of the car, insurance papers and things like that. And, um, and, his, and then this other girl stopped too and she was just making sure that everything was okay and that I wasn't just like looting the car or something like that. And then she ended up being a care aide. And then I was just like, oh, wow, this is meant to be, you know, like that I was driving slow. He was driving slow too, but he just, he was, you know, I don't know, the Parkinson's and stuff like that. And, and like he said, he blinked out and it just, it just happened. Right. And, um, 
And so, and then she came to and checked because he hit his chest. The air, airbag didn't go off, but he, and he hit his chest and it was hurt. And she came and, you know, we ended up getting him to the hospital and stuff like that and made sure that he was home with his wife and his daughter there and stuff like that. And it was, it was really emotional for myself because I am a sensitive person and I, I feel, you know, for him and, you know, how, you know, it's embarrassing. It's, it's frustrating, you know, all that kind of stuff, especially with the the Parkinson's and just, you know, even without Parkinson's and old age, just crashing your wife's car and stuff like that. But yeah, so I had my own little moment with it, you know, um, which was good because I, I got a little cry out and I felt like I needed that, not there afterwards, you know, I, but it was, you know, once again, reflecting on just driving slow, you know, he was driving slow, I was driving slow. And I tell you that car accident would have been a lot worse if he was driving a lot faster. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, so where I'm going with this, I mean, enough about the whole experience of driving slow is that to continue with this idea of themes it's like okay so you're learning certain themes and the question is why and the answer is because we change you know we're always changing in a in a certain direction i mean and so this is like spiritual talk right and this is things that i've heard from teachers bashar being one of them um, and so the, the idea is that, um, what do you call it? Um, it's like when we say that we've changed, life gives us, um, opportunities to see whether or not we have. So it's like you say, okay, well, I've, I've found inner peace. You know, you could say something like that. And it, it could be a theme that you're working on. It's certainly something that I've worked on in my own life. And then, so what happens is, is because uh, life is, I'm just going to speak very frankly, right? So life is a reflection. It's like a mirror. And so the only way you can't like reach out to the mirror and have effect, the only way for the mirror to change the reflection that you're receiving is for you to change yourself. And then the mirror has no option but to reflect the changes that you've made within yourself. But because um, life is a learning experience, it's more than just a one-to-one a -one mirror that works exactly like, say, what we understand physical, you know, sil silver back mirrors to be. Um, it's more like what happens is so you arrive at a place where you believe that you've made certain changes and then you're given like echoes essentially of circumstances to test you to see if you have actually um, embrace this change that you say that you have. And if you, when you receive, a, say, an echo, a situation, a circumstance where something happens, and then if you behave in the new way that is in alignment, right, with the, with the, with the changes that you say that you've made and if you but it then then you go on to experience that but if you just behave in the same old way that you used to where you get bent out of shape where you get upset where you get flustered or frustrated if you essentially fail the test then then that just becomes a theme that you get to keep on experiencing until you pass the test until you actually arrive at a place where when something say for myself right now when somebody is going really slow i don't think okay this is bs i have somewhere to go hurry up get mad freak out you know rage r road rage or speed around them or you know tr do something in order to circumnavigate this opportunity to be an, an expression of the 
lesson that I'm learning of this, of this, of a, of growth, of, you know, of my personal evolution, of the, of the character that I'm building. Cause these are, these are character building, uh, exercises that are, that are a gift from life or you could call it God or whatever the, whatever the intelligent, um, element of our, experience of you know this physical reality life is right and so you know I, I just like I think that that's really beautiful and that's why I really wanted to make this video in order to dovetail these other to follow up these other videos that I've made that have touched on them on this kind of stuff right I'm you know something that I really that I I like about this YouTube journey is that that's how it works for me. It's like sometimes I make a video and it seems a little silly at first until I have time to reflect on it and see how it's like, oh no, wait, actually that was pretty profound. You know, these these things that I'm intuiting, these insights that I receive, they're not silly, you know, they're not dumb. I'm not, it's not like the, the Mandela effect. It's not confabulation. I'm not confused, right? I'm not making things up. I'm, I'm having a genuine spiritual experience. And, and then it builds onto something else, which is like a video like this, where it's like, okay, we can go a little bit deeper because we've already talked about that kind of stuff. And I know that to be the process, because that's how it is, like, say, with my book, with my writing, it's like, yeah, you write about this, and then it opens up a doorway into other converse, other levels of conversation. Or, and then eventually, once you've covered so much material, it just opens up a floodgate, and you can kind of talk about anything uh, at ease, which for me is what it's like when I am in the presence of, say, certain people who have a spiritual understanding because it's like when, when somebody doesn't then it's like all this explaining and humming and hawing and stuff like that or it's like if somebody already kind of has their mind wrapped around this stuff you can just talk about anything in every direction and it, it's a really beautiful experience and there's the number of people that I have this experience with it's very different than somebody who hasn't studied a lot of stuff right who doesn't have a a really solid foundation in spirituality and philosophy and science and things like that I mean it just yeah and so yeah um yeah I do believe that is the end of this video um yeah we'll stop it right there